Hey, hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton and Kelly Barner with you here, right here on Supply Chain. Now, welcome to today's live stream. Kelly, how are you doing? I am doing great. This is such a treat. I'm so glad to be here for a Supply Chain Now main channel live stream. <laughs> well, hey, one and the only Kelly Barner, procurement guru, supply chain pro. Uh, and we're talking one, one of our favorite topics, the art of the deal and the art of how uh, deals and rebates have been evolving, right? We're not talking about 1982, are we, Kelly? <laughs> Hopefully not, although there may be a few people still using spreadsheets. Ah, <laughs> that's a little 1982. <laughs> right. Well, but you know what, though? We can do everything with spreadsheets and Excel, right? That, uh, Excel saves the world, and hey, it's still, <laughs> it's still a big part of where we are as global businesses. But hey, one of the big questions we're going to be answering, Kelly, is how are business leaders optimizing their deal management approach to ensure you can add more to the bottom line? So we've got a home run panel joining us here momentarily to explore that and a lot more. Folks, buckle up and get ready. We want to hear from you as well. Okay, so Kelly, if you're uh, good to go, we're going to say hello to a few folks as they pop in here today. We're, we're going a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, I'm glad we all set our alarm clocks a little bit earlier because typically we go at 12 noon. But we had so much stuff to cover today. We couldn't, we were too excited to wait, right? We had to go 30 minutes early. <laughs> we are ready. Let's go. All right. So, with that said, uh, Kelly, I want to introduce our guests and we're going to be swooshing them in. You ready? I'm ready. Um, all right. So, first up, we got Bob Gay, managing manager, customer profitability for rebates and incentives with Advanced Auto Parts. We've got joining Bob Scott Weir, retired vice president of purchasing at Thomas Somerville Company, and joining them both is Oshin Cook, Solutions Consultant with Enable. Hey, hey, Bob, Scott, Oshin, how are we doing today? Very good. Good, thank you. Doing well. Well, good to see each of y'all. Um, really enjoyed our prep conversation. We touched on uh, tax minimization strategies. We touched on some football. We touched on some travel. And now we're going to be talking about the art of the deal, how deal making has evolved, as well as uh, rebates, right? And rebates have come a long way. I'm looking forward to kind of getting each of your takes, as long with Kelly's, frankly, on how uh, what we're seeing and, and how companies can get better at it and offer more. So with all that to go, though, we're going to start with uh, a, a fun warm-up question. So as I look outside here in Metro Atlanta, it has got to be 70 degrees, sunny here in mid-November, right before Thanksgiving, right? It, 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 uh, we're ready for that brisk weather, but whatever it is, it's gorgeous. I'd love to be outside. Today is National Take a Hike Day. <laughs> it's new to me, new to me. So I want to ask each of y'all, if it's not hiking, what is your favorite outdoor activity? And I want to start with one of our repeat guests here, Oshin Cook. So Oshin, what do you like to do outside? Uh, well, I recently moved to London, so the big city, the big capital in the UK, and um, outside space is kind of a premium, so we don't have too much of it. So when I can get outside, I like to sit down uh, with friends in the evening, just sit around a, a campfire or a you know a fire pit and, and enjoy a few drinks and uh, and chill out in the outside space. I love it. Okay, and probably not high seas or Kool Aid. What's your favorite drink to consume around the fire pit? Oh, probably just a good beer, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> all right. I, I'm ready to hang out with you for a weekend coming up. Um, all right. So let's go to you, Bob. Uh, Bob, uh, they're living in, in North Carolina. Uh, what's one of your favorite outdoor activities? Uh, I'd probably say anything having to do with, with my immediate family. It is my biggest hobby, but also anything sports related. And then happen to be a hopeless golf addict. L really? Love the game. <laughs> Love to play, not the best at it, but still absolutely love to play it. I, I love that. And I love that, uh, that, you know, golf is such a, uh, hum a humility inducing sport, right? That uh, it and is. <laughs> so one, one, one quick follow-up question. What's your favorite course to play? Oh my goodness. I, I had the opportunity to play sawgrass once and it was, um, it was incredible but incredibly tough. But if I had to lay my finger on any one particular course, that's both tough and satisfying it's tobacco road here in North Carolina. Love it, man. So, uh, that 17th Island green and sawgrass, uh, uh any video footage of your attempts at that? Does it exist anywhere? 
Scott, <laughs> oh my gosh, you could not have served that up any better. I actually parred that hole. Man, okay. All right, so tips for golf with Bob Gay after today's live stream. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Bob. That's awesome. Um, all right, and finally, Scott Weir. Uh, so we uh, first off, congratulations. Uh, Y'all notice we uh, inserted the word retired as we were introducing Scott. 21 years with the Thomas Somerville Company. So congratulations, Scott. You'll have a lot more time for outdoor activities. So what's one of your favorite things to do? Well, um, uh, thanks for the congratulations on my retirement. I'm definitely uh, enjoying the beginnings of it here. Um, but uh, I would say, you know, I can't really, I, I was having a hard time trying to decide on what my real favorite is, but I would say pre-retirement income, <laughs> it was um, <laughs> a road racing. I'm into automotive road racing, uh, wow. amateur, um, which is just the most fun I could possibly ever have outside. Uh, now that I'm retired, my income has changed a little. Um, it, what I'm going to enjoy the most is walking on the beach. Love it, man. But uh, you know, the auto racing, that, that is intriguing. We'll have to chat more about that. And I guess you can only do that outdoors. So uh, you'll have a lot more time, time on your hands <laughs> to explore both of that, those uh, passions there. Okay. Hey, really quick. And well, you know what, Kelly, you're not getting out of this question. What's your favorite thing to do? Oh, I'm outdoors? so close. <laughs> so I actually have an answer that aligns with a lot of what everybody else has said. I have this little plaque that my family got me that says, I'm outdoorsy. I drink wine on the patio, <laughs> but I do have a fire pit. So my favorite outdoor activity is red wine by the fire pit on a cool evening. Love it. Okay. And a lot of folks don't know that Kelly has a motorcycle and so they'll do some biking. We got some pictures that I couldn't find here today. We'll save for another time. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, let's say hello to a couple quick folks. Clay Phillips, of course, is with us. Clay Diesel Phillips, uh, cause the engine is always running there. Clay, great, great to have you here today, along with Allie and Amanda and Victoria, all the folks behind the scenes helping to make the production happen. Uh, Marty is tuned in via LinkedIn from Dubai, man, some really cool things happening in that part of the world. So Marty, great to have you here today. And of course, Amanda is with us. I'm with you, Kelly. Wine on the porch. We're outdoorsy. About outdoorsy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. So uh, Kelly, where are we starting with this esteemed panel here today as we get into the some of the work, right? Absolutely. So we're going to start by getting a little bit of context and we're going to benefit from Scott Weir's many years of experience in supply chain and purchasing. Scott, what have we seen change over the course of those two decades when it comes to rebates and contracting? Um, well, I think the biggest change that we've seen in the last 20 years is, is things have gotten more complex. Um, you know, it seems like 20 years ago, e rebates were easy to calculate. And, um, you know, the, the, the management wasn't as um, critical about being exact on what the projected values were going to be. Um, those things are radically different today. We're looking for quarterly projections. And then as you get towards the end of the, for us, it was a, a calendar year, but towards the end of the fiscal year, it's monthly projections, even looking to what do we think is going to happen on all the, the uh, incentive you know, growth programs and all that and trying to get within a, 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 mi a minor uh, percentage point of accuracy, mm. you know, to within 1% of accurate on what our year end um, uh, rebates are going to be. Um, so that's, you know, more complex and uh, more accuracy is, is where we've gone in the last 20 years. Yeah. What would you say, Bob? Same thing from your experience. Have you seen anything different? I would. What I, what I uh, remember having to deal with 20, 25 years ago were very simple programs that were primarily at the wholesale level. And it could have been from where a, a particular customer were they, they were in the top five percent of a of a vendor's customers and they they deserved a, a little bit larger discount at the end of the year now it is progressed in complexity to the point where you have someone who is basic manufacturing a product you have a product for a price and it goes all the way down to the end user and there are industries where those incentives are managed calculated from the manufacturer to the wholesaler to the distributor, to the um, dealer, then down to maybe not even the DIY customer, but retail and then end consumer. And you can take it from an acre of farmland to a, an automotive product. And there are, you have to work that through the entire supply chain. Yeah. And, and so it really has gotten at the utmost complexity. 
Yeah. Hey, really quick, Kelly, I want to say hello to a few folks as uh, folks are trickling in here. Victor is tuned in via LinkedIn from Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, awesome Wednesday. Hey, I hope we all have an awesome Wednesday today. So great to have you here, Victor. And one of our dear friends, David, uh, from Canada is tuned in. And uh, whenever he's not uh, solving manufacturing and supply chain issues, he's off-road in his Jeep. And then um, off-road on Saturday, repairs on Sunday, I think is how it <laughs> typically goes. Okay. So, Kelly, I think we were going to get Oshin's take as well, right? We are. Oshin, if there's one word that jumps out at me from what both Scott and Bob said, it's complexity, right? Is Does that align with what you're seeing in the rebates and contracting space? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the things... Because, 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 definitely, we see complexity being on on the rise. So as time has gone on, and you know, we've been in this game for a, a good a good period of time now, the complexity definitely has. But I think what what drives that, or in some cases at least, what drives that is a, is a shift in attitude towards it. So it very much seemed to be, you know, from a few years ago that the attitude was, well, sometimes we'll give a rebate because it's nice, or sometimes, as as Scott said, you know, we need to, you know give somebody a little bit more of an extra discount or an extra incentive or, or something like that. But now very much more so we're seeing rebates and complex discount structures and complex kind of trade agreement structures being put in place really to try and help drive behaviors on a proactive level rather than just a kind of, oh yeah, we're going to reward somebody a little bit at the end. It's more like, okay, we need to build out these programs in this particular way because actually we want to control this behavior at a more granular level throughout the year. Or we want to develop the way that the purchasing habits or the buying habits or the sales habits are being are being kind of, you know, used from, from month to month, which is why, you know, much more granular reporting, much more kind of frequent and accurate information about it is, is so crucial. Love that. Uh, okay. So now that we've kind of set the table a bit and quit really quick, I'm going to say hello to Montadar's tuned in via LinkedIn from, I bet, warm and sunny Phoenix. Great to have you here today, Montadar. We're talking about the art of the deal, how deal making has evolved, but also how rebate management has evolved. So we welcome your POV and repeat uh, a former guest, Chuck Johnson's tuned in uh, via LinkedIn from Bentonville, Arkansas, of course, home of one of the dominant uh, retailers and, and bigger and bigger e-commerce players. So great to see you here, Chuck. Look forward to reconnecting with you soon. Okay. So I want to follow up to this conversation question for you, Scott Weir. So, you know, Thomas Somerville, tons of different products. And I would imagine that rebate contracts differ not only based on the partner, but also based on product dimensions, a slew of other factors. So Scott, how important are the minor details of contracts and how in the world do you keep track of all those details? Uh, the minor details are very important, um, especially the, as the rebate deal, the rebate contract has gotten more complex. Um, you know, there's some of them, some of the deals that exist out there are pretty simple. It's, you know, there still are the vendors that are, you know, you get an X percentage for buying from them. Yeah, you know, that's an easy one to do. Uh, you don't necessarily need software to project what's going to happen with that. But when you get to manufacturers that are a little more discerning with their um, rebate values, um, they may, uh, you know, break it down as a, uh, give you a percentage based on purchase cost, but give you different um, targets based on the weight of the product. Um, certainly one of the manufacturers we had uh, that had a, a, a very complex um, deal structure that it had, I think it was probably 10 different subcategories of products. Um, and you got your uh, rebate based on the weight of how much you bought. And, um, and, and the, then you got rebated based on the cost. So trying to just figure out what's the right weight to have. We actually, it took an, a, an awful long time to find out that the manufacturer didn't publish what they were measuring us on publicly. Um, we were getting the weights off their public information from their website. So we assumed that was the weight that they were going to judge us on. It turned out that well, the weight on the website was packaging weight, packaged uh. weight. Um, so the shipping weight of something, whereas our targets and the values that we had achieved through the year were based on the production weight. Of course, less packaging. Totally makes sense, but right. even the, the, our regional sales manager had no idea. He, he you know, when we you know, we're using the software and we're comparing the numbers, my money, you know, the dollar amount is exactly on, mm. but my target, I, I thought I had hit it. Well, no, I didn't because <laughs> I was using a higher weight because it was right. in a box, you know, <laughs> and they had to actually go to it to get the information 
out of the system because they didn't have a public available. So it was one of those things that you, know, you wouldn't expect initially until you start digging into the details to figure out why is their number different from ours. Um, so that's definitely one of the, you know, one of the, one of the things that you have to keep your eyes out for. Yep. So Bob, I'm coming to you next, but really quick, Kelly, you know, kind of along the lines of some of what Scott shared there just yesterday, we had a great live stream conversation with our friends at risk methods and you know, that definition and the alignment around definition and the alignment around what success looks like and having, you know, if you've got this master equation, the whole, the same, uh, the whole team has to be, have the same definition of each, each constant, each variable, right? So the master, uh, the quadratic equation or something of supply chain or rebates. Kelly, what, but based on what you heard Scott share, what's between your ears there? Well, it's interesting because if there's anything that we can all probably agree to is that there's never a good thing that's a surprise in business, right? You don't want anybody to be surprised. But in this area, as I was listening to Scott talk, it actually makes me think this is one of those areas where suppliers, sales reps, and procurement or purchasing are very much aligned because the supplier wants their rebate structure to drive desired buying behavior, right? And procurement wants to make sure that if we have this agreement put in place with certain rebate incentives, and we factored that into, you know, what we think the overall value of that contract is going to be, we also want to make sure that we hit those targets in a strategic way. And so it's actually trying to make sure that everybody's aligned because the supplier wants you to get there for the sales point of view and procurement wants you to get there for the savings point of view. It's trying to work together to motivate the behaviors of the people actually doing the buying. It's one of those rare, great opportunities that might lend itself to some natural collaboration. I love that. Uh, we got to avoid the tug of war. Um, so Bob, come to you next. Uh, your take on you know, how you uh, see the increasing need to not only manage the rebate programs, right? Kind of the, at the uh, higher altitude, but to analyze them, to determine what programs are working, where they're falling short, and where in the world, where should, where should we find those levers so that we can make the changes to make them more successful? What's your take on all that? Well, oddly enough, exactly what Kelly just mentioned on Scott's comments was the notes that I was taking. It is, it's a lot about visibility. It's a lot about projecting um, the goals and or uh, the behavior that you're trying to drive. And it, the, the key thing behind any rebate and or incentives, not just a rebate, but the incentives as a whole, they're capable of so much. It all depends on how you design it, how you implement it, how you provide the visibility to the customer to make sure that um, everyone from procurement to the sales team to the customer are on the same wavelength driving towards the same goals of being mutually beneficial. So in that instance, you're, you're going to try new and or different things and incent on delivery metrics, mm -hmm. volume. Uh, it could be very well, um, the uh, Scott mentioned the weight of deliveries of how he was receiving it. So you must analyze those programs to find out what's working. Because if you if you do build a program that's simply not driving the behavior you're after, uh, then you need to adjust that program, cancel the program, pull that customer off that program, put them onto another. So it's a constant state of adjustment. It's a constant state of analysis. You can't just put it into a system and hope it works, or else you're simply throwing dartboards or darts at a dartboard, hoping. That it works yeah. right hope is not a strategy uh, or at least if, if it is one it's a really bad one but also it's not we talked about in the pre-show we we're talking about infomercials and stuff this is not a ron popeel set it and forget it right you you've got to set it and then management uh manage it to make it more effective right Oshin, i want to come to you next based on what bob has said and some you know the comments thus far any additional observations Oshin? yeah just to pick up on something that that bob you just mentioned so you know, I, I really, we see that all the time. We, re, we really do. And I think one of the key things to, that, that people often forget is, you know, it's not about just doing that analysis once and kind of saying, okay, what's working right now? This thing's working. We're going to cancel everything else and roll that out to everyone because everybody's different. You know, whether it's, whether you're on the supply side or the, uh, or the buy side or whichever end of the table you're looking at, you know, all of your trading partners, your suppliers, your customers, your everybody's going to be slightly different. And if you've got a program that works really, really great, great for, for one customer or one type of customer or one group of customers, 
that's that's great, but it might not work as well for everybody else. And having that kind of constant iterative process of actually, this is going to be a regular audit that we're going to do where we're going to look at everything, analyze what's working, break it down in as many different ways as we can and find that and accept that, you know, it doesn't have to be the same across the board for everybody because maybe that's not what everybody wants. And mm. it's about building those you know, those bespoke agreements between you and a group of customers or even a specific customer or supplier, you know, and, and, and making sure that it is mutually beneficial and you're improving those relationships, you know, not just kind of a, you know, a, an across the board record of ah, everything looks the same. So it's fine. Right. Does anyone else can envision if you're like me, that those fire pit conversations, ocean, oceans around, there's a lot of intellectual conversation and perhaps even some whiteboards as they solve <laughs> global business ills. I mean, goodness gracious, Ocean, I love that. With um, beer. Don't forget the beer. <laughs> and the beer. Hey, really quick, before I come to Scott to get his final observations before Kelly takes his talk in ERP and stuff, um, I want to make sure folks know about the white paper uh, that talks about the evolution of rebate management that our friends at Enable and Oshin's team have put out. If we can, Amanda, Clay, Ali, you name it, if we can drop that in the comments and make sure that's really easy for folks to be one click away from some of the stuff uh, in case they're visual learners like many of us are. Okay, so uh, Scott Weir, uh, any additional observations around you know the details, uh, the constant tweaks, some of the things that Bob and Oshin have talked about before we move into more of the technology? Um, no, I think, um, both Bob and Osteen have, uh, really covered it pretty well. Um, there's, you know, it's a, it comes down to making sure that, you know, you internally understand what the vendor is asking of you and that the vendor understands what you're saying. So it's, it's that language back and forth that you really need to understand each other. Um, and you know, that you as was said earlier, nobody wants to be surprised come to the end of the day whenever you, you think you made a target and you didn't. Um, and then you have to explain why you didn't know. Um, so you want all those, you want all that information up front. You want to be as accurate as possible, as detailed as possible, and, and make it not onerous, mm. um, you know, so that uh, everybody um, understands what each other is saying and everybody can get to the same answer easily. Yep. I, I think I read the latest rankings of the top 100 worst conversations to have of all time and bad rebate surprises. Number seven on the top 100 <laughs> list, I believe. Whatever you um, do, don't bring that up at Thanksgiving dinner. Nothing right. ruins a holiday like a debate about bad rebate management. I love it. Okay. So on that note, Kelly, let's keep driving. I think we're going to be talking technology then next. We are. So, Bob, I want to get your thoughts around finding the right tool to fix the problem, right? We've established complexity. We've established that this is a widespread challenging thing, but that there's huge opportunity if you can effectively manage rebates. And so having the right tool for the job is critical. When, when you were comparing what an ERP system can handle to what something like a more specialized tool like Enable can handle, what was your thought and decision making process there? It was, uh, there were th several thought processes that, that went into it. And the initial thought many years ago when we first started looking into systems to manage our rebates is that there simply was no system available. Mm -hmm. There was no company, there was no system, um, nothing out there could manage the level of complexity that we had. And lo and behold, Enable rose to the top pretty quickly. Now, at the time we were also um, going into the, the initial negotiations and discussions, discussions of implementing a new ERP system. Uh, both major brand ERP systems said that they could handle our rebates, and we quickly found out that they could not. And while they could, you know, you think of a, a company-wide organization or, or ERP system that's supposed to wrangle all of your financials, of course a system like that can manage to pay 3% back to a customer. But is it five locations? Is it one location? Are you paying to one address or are you sending five checks to five locations? The, the complexities of the programs uh, in our evaluation, the ERP simply were not capable of that level of complexity. And then the ERP, the implementation timelines are a lot longer with any ERP system compared to Enable. Enable, Enable has it almost down to a science, and while they are incredibly flexible, um, they, they have a way of working that, that 
is simply shorter than any ERP implementation I think any larger organization would have. Now, Oshin, does that does what Bob shared sound like what you hear an awful lot? Do you hear similar challenges and people out there looking for solutions that they just can't seem to find through their ERP? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it, and it, I think it, this this feeds into to what we were talking about in terms of the increasing complexity over time, and as the attitudes and the markets change, that complexity grows. You know, and it often is that you know, as Bob said, ERP systems are perfectly capable of handling a very simple rebate, or maybe it's just an input field for what is the rebate you type it in here. You know, and and that's that's fine if that's where you where you are with your with your rebates and the kind of agreements that you have. If things are developing and things are becoming more complex and things are becoming more difficult. You know, what we often find when people kind of come and speak to us or we're kind of, you know, surveying the market is, is very much, you know, people will have their ERP system and then a whole series of spreadsheets that they're using to support that, that basic functionality that lives within the ERP system. So, you know, it, you end up saying, okay, well, actually, we're just going to do it on the ERP because we've got one system and that's going to deal with everything. But then quite quickly, you realize, actually, I might only have one system, but I've got one system and six manual processes and four spreadsheets and three folders. And and it, it, it really does, you know, because that, as we said, the complexity increases, the strain on something like that increases, and the likelihood that one system is going to be able to handle that as, as well as all of your other, you know, ERP stuff is, is just not, is not realistic. Well, especially when that one system wasn't designed for this purpose, right? I mean, it's, there are a lot of things. Sometimes I feel bad for ERPs. You know, there's a lot of things that they do. There's a lot of things they were designed to do, but business has changed so much, whether it's complexity or simply our approaches or even user expectations. How does Enable actually work with ERPs to make sure that their capabilities aren't necessarily lost, that you're not creating that side channel, but that you're still meeting those expectations and addressing those needs around complexity? Absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we don't replace an ERP because an ERP is covering a whole, a whole bunch of things. What we do is rebate management. You know, and we we very much stand on our own two feet in that space. We're a standalone system where, you know, if you're in that position where you're struggling to manage things from that point of view, that's what we've, we've been designed for from the ground up for that purpose. You know, what we then do is we then feed that back into the ERP so that eventually all of your information is in one place, you know, and all of that information about what you're accruing, what your projections, your forecasts, your uh, you know, performance of all of these different things is can be fed right back into where you want it and where you need it. But, you know, we're just removing that expectation that you're actually going to calculate all of that in one place, because as you know, we've said, it's, it's, it's not realistic. Yeah. You want to work with folks that jump out of the bed every morning to focus on whatever need that you have, right? Whatever value that you're looking to bring in, you know, it's like if you're the, the world, champion Atlanta Braves and we're missing one ace in the rotation for next year. Let's go find someone that specializes in striking people out and starting baseball games. Um, but the other thing, right? Kidding aside, the other thing is when, you know, how often do you hear the word spreadsheets, especially in with amongst teams and thinking, Oh joy, we're going to be moving faster because we have <laughs> spreadsheets, right? And it's, it typically doesn't happen like that, right? Um, mm -hmm. All right. So I want to, I'm going to share a couple of things here. Uh, and then I'm coming to you next, Scott, for some recommendations. Um, so Shyam says, great stuff. And business to business, when we talk about consumer, then their shift in buying behavior, where most of the companies are focusing on fill rate. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here, companies should have the agile approach of managing such changes, whatever it is, uh, shipping, prototyping, fill rates, you name it, uh, early supplier engagement, change management, and supply chain management resilience are all pivotal. Those are some really big um, big thoughts there, Shyam. You're right. Supplier engagement, change management, and supply chain management resilience are all pivotal, especially in this era that we're fighting through. Uh, the VUCA. Have you all heard of VUCA yet, the acronym? Okay, I can't remember. I can't remember what uh, each of the letters stands for, but it's a it's um, variable. Un well, it means it's tough times right now to navigate through these global supply chains. So, Cheyenne, good stuff there. Um, okay, Scott Weir, I want to come to you next because uh, we're going to talk about recommendations. Right, we we've kind of spent the first uh, half of our conversation today, kind of talking observations, 
the evolution, uh, the need of, of really getting in the details of, of working also with customized platforms, right? As you, as you look to upgrade, let's get in some recommendations for, hey, keeping up with the ever-evolving rebate management landscape. Because not only are you trying to bring more value for your customers and, and the consumers, but you got to keep up with the competition, right, Scott? Yeah, I agree. Um, one of the things, you know, as I'm sitting here thinking about the history of how long I've been doing this, managing, you know, what is, what, did, how much do we buy, how much do we get, um, you know, for buying that stuff in, in in the world of rebates, is, you know, I did that. All all of the spreadsheets, the Microsoft Access queries, and forms, and templates, and everything to try and do um, what we do today in in enable, which is. You know, I've got variables between manufacturers and all the different ways that we're having to calculate things. So, you know, if you've got 150 to 200 different rebates to to deal with on an annual basis, um, trying to um, customize each individual query, each individual spreadsheet to try and manage that subset of information is is difficult and and it isn't scalable. Uh, I'm an absolute example of that. I mean, in, I think it was in 2019, um, whenever in late 2019, early 2020, when I first made contact with an enable, um, and I don't recall whether it was me finding a, something online or whether somebody cold called me. Um, but it was like, I, you know, I don't think we need the software to do this. I I've got it managed, but then, you know, you get to the point where, wait a minute, I can do other things. I don't need to spend 50% of my time or 20% of my time managing rebates. How do I make this, you know, where I've created all this custom stuff uh, to manage the rebates? How do we get that into one platform? I don't think it can happen. Well, you know, it can. And I didn't realize it could, you know, and most people would probably not realize the same um, if they weren't exposed to something uh, that, that can do it. You need to be able to, you know, different vendors, different parameters, different measurement bases, you know, take out the, the discount, don't take out the discount. Uh, how many categories do you have to break it down into? Um, scalability um, becomes the biggest problem with an individual doing this. Um, and then me communicating to the board of directors or even to the president and CFO is, here's how these are calculated. You know, well, I use this query uh, that I wrote, um, you know, and, and to do it for this vendor, but I do it differently for that vendor because they have different parameters. Um, but, you know, and so I have had literally no documentation other than my own internal memory as to how I did each of those things. I tried to consolidate it, make one way, but it doesn't work that way because everybody's different. Every vendor is different. Yeah. Um, so you need software to help with that. And, and then the documentation that I never had, which was one of the things that we, when I looked at it and said, oh, I can print out this document that says, here's how we defined the rebate in our system as to how we achieve these things. Here's the basis. Here's the, you know, what we're getting to it. And all that's technology. I mean, right. and, and we didn't have it. We didn't have technology in house. Um, we weren't able to do that internally and our ERP could handle a basis, a basic rebate. Oh, you get a flat percentage on purchases. Great. Try and stack on top of that, yeah. you know, other things. That's where the ERPs fall down. They just don't have the ability. And, and some of it's, that's not their focus. Their mm -hmm. focus is sales, collecting money and shipping product. Right. So, so you dropped a lot of goodness there, uh, Scott and Kelly, I'd welcome your take. Uh, but one of the things that you touched on is, is how it's, it's a great, having the right system gives you a great tool in the boardroom uh, to help the leadership team better understand how we're leveraging rebates or really anything. If you have the right tool that helps you communicate so better decisions can be made at the, the highest levels and recognition of progress and wins that are taking place and, and why, you know, communicating the why behind it. Uh, great point there. But Kelly, beyond that, what else did you hear Scott share there in, in his recommendations? Well, I think the, the key word that Scott shared is finance, right? So when purchasing procurement, anybody truthfully gets pulled in to explain something to the CFO and, you know, he or she is looking for the most up-to-date information and the answer starts with, Oh, you know, about <laughs> like that usually does not instill a lot of confidence in the person delivering the message, even if it's not their fault that they don't have the tool in place to get the right answer. But it doesn't instill a lot of confidence in the number either. And so being able to very easily re-pull the most accurate and up-to-date information, 
that's where you can actually walk into a meeting like that with confidence. You have confidence in it. The people hearing it have confidence in the message. And then ultimately, the most important thing is what decisions does that empower? Right. You're trying to make good decisions on accurate information. And if Scott has to go rerun all of his queries really, really fast before he goes into that meeting, just to give sort of a ballpark or I'm, I'm pretty sure kind of an answer, that is just not going to cut it given the dollar value that we're talking about in most of these situations. Great point. Great point. Uh, I'm going to come to you next, Bob. I want to share two quick thoughts. So first off, Eric, thanks for joining us today. And how true a spreadsheet is certainly better <laughs> than an abacus. Uh, you, that's you're a right. very positive point of view, Eric. Thank you. It is better yeah. than an abacus. That's right. And Eric, thanks for joining us here today. We'd love to know where you're tuned in from via LinkedIn. But hey, you know, we, we don't want to beat up too much on spreadsheets. You know, they have their place. They certainly have their place. But we're talking about the next generation of rebates management and where you can exact the most value in what can be, as we've laid out thus far, really complicated stuff where it may deserve a lot more than a spreadsheet if you really want to make it a, a, a bigger, more valuable aspect of the business. Um, and then I want to also share this from Sarah. So true. Minding the middle between the spreadsheet and the ERP is constantly evolving. What a great comment there. A paperless environment that can communicate between the plant, uh, plant floor and the corner office is essential. Excellent point, Sarah. Sarah, you need your own show. That is a great comment there. Thanks for joining us here today. Let us know where you're tuned in from there via LinkedIn. Okay, Bob. Man, there's so much that I'm sure you want to touch on of what, what we've shared over the last couple of minutes. But um, what would you add when it comes to general recommendations, but also two-part question, general, general recommendations and any advice that you would give in terms of data preparation so that we can, again, it's back to speeding up the velocity, speeding up the process of onboarding a rebate management tool. Bob? What I'll say, general recommendations when dealing with keeping up with with competition i think we all realize that it's absolutely essential and the 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 incredible functionality for an erp and the reason i'm touching back on this was a question from chuck earlier was the incredible functionality from from an erp is essential but they also they it is relatively structured in the way they do things because it is so much data and they are capable of so much. En Enable builds in the flexibility to be able to compete from a point of view from when you look that you're not always trying to grow a customer or grow their purchases. You may already have 90, 95, 100%, but you may want to move them over to um, may maybe a different category of purchases or you're simply trying to maintain that volume or blunt the competition. Like I said, there's so many things that rebates are capable of. But in, in that same instance, when we talk about Excel and what Excel is capable of, we have, we, we have gotten to the point where we have dozens of Excel spreadsheets that are 50 columns and 150,000 lines long. Anything past 100,000 lines just gets incredibly unwieldy. So when you're trying to pull all of your data together, you need to think about it from a perspective of what would I do to make this manual process better? I need to wrangle my exceptions. I need to reduce the exceptions and maybe create a new program, group, ungroup customers, uh, factor in your products, whether you're trying to make it on deliveries to drive the, the, the particular um, behavior that, that you're looking for for the customer. But what it really is, is breaking down your manual processes and in the, any manual processes, depending on how long you've had to do that, you're going to have exceptions and you're going to have five different people that did the exact same task five different ways. Mm -hmm. And you must break that down. And it all goes back to the old adage of good data in, good data out, but bad data in, bad data out. Yes. So you're going to have to go through this with an ERP system. But doing it earlier, implementing earlier with a product like Enable will help you find your faults uh, a lot earlier than an ERP implementation would and a lot easier. I love that. Hey, Bob, when, whenever we write a book around here, I want you to narrate the audio uh, audio <laughs> copy, right? I love I could listen to you talk, read, read from the dictionary, I think. Um, 
So you shared so much good stuff there. Uh, and by the way, Oshin is back with us. And I want to make a point. VUCA, I said earlier, V-U-C-A. Folks, this is the age we live in. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Get to know that VUCA, VUCA acronym. Things don't happen like we want them to. Um, so Oshin, great to have you back. Um, anything you'd like to comment there on what Bob has shared and what you may have heard uh, Scott share earlier when it comes to recommendations and, you know, moving forward, moving to organization forward? Yeah, I think I think it, it all comes back to those two kind of when you think about it, competing ideas, right? We want everything simple. We want to make sure that things are defined and that everything is very clear and, and, and easy. We want a repeatable process for all people involved. But as complexity increases, that gets harder and harder to manage, you know, and and as, as Bob, you were just saying, you know, you end up with spreadsheets that are enormously large. You end up with, you know, processes that, you know, can't be repeated and you try and teach them to people and, and everybody's doing them slightly differently because of the way that it all works. And I think having that kind of defined set of parameters within within a framework that will, you know, allow you to be as complex as you need to be, but also put the boundaries on, okay, well, you know, you need to do it within this framework. You need to do it in this way. And then it's going to, it's going to allow you that kind of best of both worlds, I think is, is the, is the way that it, it comes at that. And, you know, again, as, as, as Bob said, garbage in, garbage out, you know, you right. Have to- you have to make sure that, you know, the point at which you're starting from, you're, you're, you're saying, okay, let's look at, look at everything that we've got here. You know, whether that's from a data point of view, whether that's from a, you know, a, a negotiation, a rebate deal, an analytics point of view, let's make sure that we get it correct from the beginning so that, you know, further down the line, it's, it, we can only get better. Excellent point. And, and I want to pull out too one of the things that each of y'all have spoken to throughout, but Bob just mentioned, you know, you might have five team members, doing the same thing, but doing it five different ways. Well, when it comes to uh, velocity, when it comes to scalability, which Scott touched on earlier, uh, when it, it, when it really comes to digital transformation, quite frankly, uh, we've got to, we've got to automate some of this stuff, right? We got to, 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 to move faster and also have our team members, you know, where can, where can they add the most value? Where can we automate some of the blocking and tackling and really elevate the blocking and tackling, frankly, um, these are these are the opportunities that I think platforms like Enable and just this digital transformation landscape that we're all moving through. Those are opportunities that are out there. Um, I want, I've got one more question for you, Oshin, as we start to wrap uh, up, up today's conversation uh, around um, data, the data, the data. But Kelly, before we do that, uh, based on we, we've heard just in the last 10 minutes, I think it was my favorite part, the recommendations that, between Bob and Scott and, and then Oshin kind of closes it. But what do folks really need to pay attention to in this in this conversation around deal making and rebate uh, rebate management? Well, I think what I'm hearing is that it's the value, as Scott said, is not necessarily in just getting to the number, or getting to the information. It's what actions that allows you and your organization to take. And so whether it's going into the meeting with the CFO and having real confidence around an actual number that is right up to date. Or truthfully, as Bob pointed out, this idea of automating so that you can manage by exception, exceptions are always going to exist because VUCA, right? Right. So you're always going to have that trying to say, oh, well, we're just going to smash everything into that, this box. Ultimately, that's actually eliminating opportunity. So if we can automate things so that we're dedicating our best resources, even if it's fewer resources, to just handling those exceptions in the best way possible, that is something we're hearing across the whole source to pay line of processes, but I can absolutely see where it would apply to rebate management. Excellent point. But going back to something you shared, man, don't we all wish we would have a Hulk every one, uh, every, every so often so we can smash things in global supply <laughs> chain. Some of those days we need it, right? Uh, that's a little, little comic book reference for my son, Ben, who is, gosh, if you're driving with Ben anywhere, you're talking comic books and superheroes. <laughs> Love you, Ben. Okay. Um, and yes, Jose, 20 years of spreadsheets. They are so fun. <laughs> we can all, all relate to that. How about Thanks. 20 years of somebody else's spreadsheet? There's nothing <laughs> harder than trying to manage someone else's spreadsheet because our brains do not all work the same way. Right. That is right. Uh, excellent point, uh, Kelly. And Jose, thanks for joining us. Let us know where you're tuned in from. I see your Yankees hat, but let us know. Um, okay. So, Oshin, I want to get back to um, 
you know, getting your observations around enable customers that might find previous mistakes when you're transferring all the data over from what can be older uh, uh, antiquated systems. Sure. And, and, and you know, I, I think just before I dive into this, I'm going to include spreadsheets in the antiquated systems things because I think it's it's just impossible to ignore. You know, I think in either way, you know, you've got to look at it. You've got to look at it from that complexity angle. You know, the exceptions thing is a really is a really great point there. You know, you may get most things right, but when you've got spreadsheets or systems or you know old old ways of managing that that haven't been reviewed, that haven't been audited, that maybe you've got too many people in them doing things too many different ways. You know, just take a think about you know how much data and how much calculation and processing is required to calculate this sort of stuff. It's not uncommon for us to see, you know, as Bob said, you know, a couple of spreadsheets that may have 50, 60, um, 50 or 60 different columns, and then your your row count will be in the hundreds of thousands. You know, and and you'll be there hoping that there's no there's no mistakes it's fine if you can say yes okay sure most things are okay but you know with the kind of numbers that people talk about with the kind of volumes that people talk about a zero or two in the wrong place can mean a, a real a real kind of a real big a real big problem you know right um that you said it earlier there's no kind of happy surprises we want to know we want to know everything because we need that the analytics and i think you know, it is it is very common that people come to us and they say, yeah, we're really confident. We're really confident in, you know, here's last year's data. Um, we're getting up, we're getting onboarded, we're getting going with this. Last year's fine, just use that as a sense check and we'll produce a number. And they go, wow, that's different from our number. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's quite common. So. And oh, hilarity gosh. ensues. <laughs> right. Um, well, you know, hope was mentioned again. And, you know, hope, again, is a, it can be a very poor strategy, but in this VUCA environment, it's even less effective, folks. So you got to take, you know, you got to, um, Nate Endicott with Rate Links a few, uh, I guess about a month or so ago, uh, shared a t shirt ism with us. And he was talking, he was challenging folks to kind of do something different with their freight. And, and kind of here, we're challenging folks to do something different when it comes to their rebate management uh, systems. And Nate said, folks, Put those donuts down, get off the recliner, you know, put this thing in a headlock and take action because there's opportunities to bring a lot more value. So I love that, uh, Nate. Okay, so Kelly, we're going to go around the horn and make sure everyone knows how to connect with uh, Bob, Scott, and Oshin here in a minute. But what's been, what's been some of your favorite parts of the expertise that this panel has dropped on us here today? I think the thing I appreciate most, and again, I'm coming to this from a you know corporate procurement, enterprise procurement perspective, rebates are something that a lot of times is either official training or unofficial training. Like, listen, it's such a hassle. It doesn't come through. We can't track it. It's too hard. Don't even consider it as an option. And wow. that is a huge lost opportunity that sure, there is a lot of complexity that we started talking about. But with that complexity comes opportunity that if you can bring that as a lever into different types of negotiating strategies and account structures and contract formats, if there is a way to both incentivize your buyers and get your suppliers to work with you, to give you that to work with as another type of result to deliver, I don't think complexity is a good reason not to do it, right? Because as we've established, everything is now complicated. And so it's no longer enough to say, this is too hard. And so therefore we're not going to consider it. I think the more viable path forward is finding the right tool for managing it effectively at scale using automation where we can so that we bring that back onto the table as an option in negotiations and contracts. Well said, you know, I bet folks, plenty of folks told old Malcolm McLean, we can't do this. We can't do any containerization of global freight. What? It's too hard. Right. <laughs> but as we all know, that revolutionized freight still as we as we have it here today. And while we still have plenty of challenges, mm -hmm. it's great that that aspect of standardization is part of the global freight system. Um, okay. No shortage of things to talk about. I want to go around the horn. I uh, really have enjoyed. Frankly, look, I'm, I am not the rebate expert. I've learned so much uh, in, in our conversations with Oshin through the previous webinar and in, in today's live stream. And I really love hearing from the Bob and the Scots um, uh, of, of, of the industry that are out there, you know, finding ways of using rebates and 
the next generation of rebate management to bring more value for their customers. I mean, that, that that's some really good good conversations there. So Bob Gay, uh, who was make, made sure that there was no corporate secrets on his whiteboard over his left <laughs> shoulder before we came live. Um, how can folks connect with you and, and uh, maybe pick your brain more on some of the things you're doing at Advanced Auto Parts? I would say the best way by far is, is LinkedIn. I have all of my, my information, uh, both company and uh, personal email, as well as phone numbers on LinkedIn. Wonderful. LinkedIn does make it really easy these days, huh? Um, all right. So let's go to Scott Weir. So Scott, you may not want to be, uh, you know, after 21 years of, of, of making big things happen uh, in industry and you got a well-deserved break coming up. So uh, folks, if Scott doesn't get back to you in a little while, hey, it's give him a he's break, walking right? on the beach, right. <laughs> or racing, right. Auto racing. So Scott, how can folks so, uh, connect with you? Uh, they can get to me through uh, LinkedIn or just email me directly at uh, Scott at weir.tv. Um, All right. Just that easy. Yep. Hey, Scott, what beach do you, uh, what beach do you love walking on the most? Where, you, where do you think you'll, what beach will, will see the most of your time in 2022? Um, somewhere in Ecuador, actually. Oh, I love that, man. I love that. Well, Hey, send us pictures. Let's stay in touch and congratulations again on one heck of a career. I appreciate you sharing, uh, some of your, uh, expertise here today, especially on, on deal making and uh, the practical side and, and the, uh, the uh, innovative side of modern rebate management. Okay, Oshin, uh, repeat guest. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback around what you've offered here at Supply Chain Now, going back to the webinar and now the live stream. How can folks connect with you to, and you know, take advantage of the art of the possible in modern rebate management? Sure. Uh, it's the same way as before, Scott. So you um, you can get me on LinkedIn uh, or you can email me directly at uh, oshin.cook at enable.com. Um, you, can, you can share our, our handles out. Yeah, let's make sure. I think that's in the show notes of the episode, if it uh, of the live stream notes. If it's not, though, let's go ahead and drop that in the comments. I bet folks uh, will be wanting to share a cup of coffee with Oshin as a plan for 2022. And as Bob called out in the comments, love what Kelly shared a moment ago. Rebates do not need to be a degradation of margin. Kelly. Excellent, man. Again, it is the uh, Ann Rice of global supply chain right here. Kelly Barner. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. Well, huge thanks. Uh, and Kelly, stick around for a second. Uh, I want to, uh, can uh, keep getting some of your key takeaways from this great conversation we've had with Bob, Scott, and Oshin. Big thanks to our panel. So Bob Gay, again, manager, customer profitability, rebates, and incentives with advanced auto parts. Scott Weir, retired vice president of purchasing at Thomas Somerville Company. And Oshin Cook, solutions consultant, an excellent fire pit tender uh, <laughs> manager with Enable. Great to see all of y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's fun being here. What a great panel. What a great panel. I love when, um, you know, clearly enable, no pun intended, or maybe a pun slightly intended, is enabling the next generation, right? And it's really cool to, to, to have them back with us. But then to bring in, you know, Bob and Scott, who, you know, uh, they probably have several full plates of things. So to, to find a way and kind of hear from them about how they have um, you know, found that customized solution to not just do it, mm -hmm. but do it better. I mean, this has been a, a pretty intriguing conversation for me. Well, and it was for me, too. And it's interesting. I actually haven't thought about or talked about rebates in a while. I mean, this goes all the way back to my days of actually being a procurement practitioner. But I think it's a valid reminder that for as many different types of products and services that we buy or types of suppliers we partner with or contract structures, there is always another way to create more value that incentivizes the right behavior that helps the buy side and the supply side. I would be willing to venture that rebates are one of those things that a lot of procurement professionals haven't necessarily thought about in a while. And maybe it's time to bring those back into the conversation, especially if there's an easy way to manage it. Undoubtedly, you know, um, there's not much in this world that's not worth that, that especially hasn't been revisited in a long time. That's not worth a, you know, a, a reintroduction or discovery conversation. So, uh, hey, folks, you can learn more really quick about Enable. They got a really simple URL, enable.com, 
And let's drop uh, that white paper again that you can download about um, the evolution of rebate management, which you may look at and say, hey, you know, it's worth the conversation. So y'all check that out. Um, Kelly, on a different note, dial P for procurement, right? Because you've been you've been there and done it as a procurement mm -hmm. practitioner. And now you're helping other folks understand not just procurement, really global business, but but a lot of procurement stuff. Yeah, from what's, that perspective. Right. What's to come when it comes to dial P for procurement uh, in the months up, coming up? Well, we've, we're fresh off of two really great conversations, one around supplier diversity and the other one around supply chain risk. So I would actually say in the months to come, given all of the VUCA we're seeing in the supply chain, I think we're actually going to see a lot more alignment between what's happening around conversations in supply chain, as well as what's happening around the same in procurement. You know, sometimes the two groups vary and talk about slightly different things, focus on slightly different things. I have a feeling in 2022, we're going to be not only working in lockstep, but pulling in the exact same direction. So this is a great time to be following Dial P if you're just finding us. It really is. So this week's been an interesting one. On Monday, we talked cyber risks in, across global business, certainly supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, that's only going to grow. Uh, yesterday, it was about risk management and also kind of the modern day approach to risk sure. management, right? And now today is, uh, I think we learned a lot around the modern day approach to leveraging rebates and, and managing uh, rebate programs. So a great week of learning here today. Folks, connect with Kelly Barner on LinkedIn and via uh, Dial P for Procurement and Buyer's Meeting Point. Be sure to connect with Oshin Cook and the A-Team over at Enable. You can learn more at enable.com. Big thanks and connect uh, with Bob and Scott. Man, home run perspective from folks that are doing it. Uh, so big thanks to both Bob and Scott for joining us here today. Most importantly, uh, whatever you do, take action. Deeds, not words. Hey, do good, give forward, be the change that's needed. And on that note, we'll see you next time right back here on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody.